Hi, everybody. Lunchtime Live has just begun. It is a stormy Tuesday. Very stormy here at the Tijuana Estuary. I uh, will just wait a minute or so, to see if we have an audience on this stormy Tuesday. I'm standing inside the visitor center because of the stormy Tuesday, but I have the door open and I will just share what it's like outside. The, the lighting is tricky when I'm inside versus uh, trying to um, get uh, eat even out under the covered patio. So it is windy, it is rainy, there's sideways wind. So I'm standing inside the visitor center of the Tijuana Estuary getting ready for today's program. I think we have one member in our audience right now, and that's all right, not everyone. Hi, Shirley, thanks for saying hello. And uh, 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 welcome to the Lunchtime Live. This is our last one of the year. Um, I'm just giving a little, uh, give you a little taste of what it's like out there. There goes our shade sails in the amphitheater. It is windy, I don't know if you can, you can hear that I am forced to be inside today for the last lunchtime live of the year. Hi everybody. I hope you're having, for those of you far, I hope that you're having better weather than we are. Um, you wish you were there. Yeah, we wish you were here too. Hi Ann. Um, hi Donna. Thanks everyone for joining in for today's last lunchtime live of the year. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll be back in the beginning of the year, maybe with some modifications, but we will be back. Uh, my name is Maria, and today, standing inside the visitor center, hopefully there's not an echo, because it's just too stormy to be out there, even for uh, this appropriate uh, topic today. Okay. Hi, Susie. Let's see, let's see, there it is. Just give me one more shot. I can't show myself and the outside in the same, with the lighting, the way the lighting works around here. Uh, with these devices. So um, anyway, but since today we're here to talk about the classic mallard, <laughs> uh, I'll be showing a lot of photos anyway, but I was hoping to stand on the, you know, at the, at the edge of the um, tidal linkage where we do see them, although the tide is low. Uh, they may be out there, but I'm not going out there. <laughs> uh, so this is the classic duck, the mallard. Uh, many of you, I would take a guess and say that you have, if not seen a, f a photo, you've seen these in person. They are so common, so widespread, member of the waterfowl. You know, essentially ducks, geese, swans. Uh, so they are, ducks are, are waterfowl and uh, mallards are what be uh, belong to what we call dabbling ducks. So they, um, Let's see, I'm reading comments. Michelle, fastest bird in sustained flight. Yeah, so we'll get to some of those cool facts about mallards. They are actually, this is a, this is a very common, you know, uh, most, probably the most iconic duck there is, uh, but they are really rather interesting. So we see them, but maybe we don't know a lot about them. I sure didn't before, uh, before this program. So, and we see them, the classic uh, dabbling duck, they, they, they dabble for food means they kind of they kind of tip over um, and rather than dive down. So uh, their legs tend to be a little further forward than diving ducks. Theirs are a little further back uh, for better propulsion when swimming. So they're dabbling ducks, uh, male and female, looking very different like most dabbling ducks. The male with that colorful green head, the uh, yellow. Um, uh, bill there, that classic white collar. Who knows? Maybe this is the the, the you know the the uh, idea of death from death for Daffy Duck. Maybe this is where it came from. The male mallard. Uh, we see the brown chest. Sometimes it can look a little purplish, gray body, and those those uh, bright orange legs. And by the way, I'll stop to say, please feel free ask questions. Uh, share your comments related to Mallard throughout the program uh, so we can have uh, sometimes I like you know that that conversation uh, 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 sparks more um, more information 
and, uh, and more engagement. So then we have the female, the classic female uh, in the dabbling uh, ducks, which are generally very uh, less colorful. I don't want to say boring, I don't want to say dull, but yeah, uh, just more of the, the camouflage colors, um, bright orange feet again, uh, and then more of an orange beak, more of an orange beak, and uh, a little bit of color on her wing there. And that's because, you know, her job is to be a bit more camouflaged. We'll talk about nesting in a little bit. So then we got medium sized duck, although rather uh, on the bigger side for what we call dabbling ducks. And we see then those webbed feet because they spend so much time in water um, uh, so they can move around a bit more efficiently. All right, uh, so um, one other thing not unseen here when it comes to the male, that classic, <laughs> uh, most easily identifiable, identifiable duck is how many of you ever noticed the curl in the tail feathers seen in the male, right? I don't know, something about that gives it kind of that sort of distinguished look, that curl, but there he is in the females more straight. We don't see that. Hi, Myra, hola. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so these are found everywhere, meaning throughout the, uh, you know, North America um, in almost every fresh or saltwater habitat, right, um, um, wetland. All right, so they, they aren't just freshwater, they just aren't, aren't just saltwater. Um, and they uh, range from uh, Canada and Alaska to Northern Baja, but they're predominantly not migratory so much. I mean, I mean they're in many parts of the US, they're year round, but uh, those ones in the further Northern area do uh, migrate to Southern United States or Northern Baja uh, during the winter months. So they're not gonna find them up there all year round. Um, there are estimated to be something like 5 to like 11 million of uh, ma uh, mallards uh, through, through, the, uh, fa you know, through the North America, um, depending on the year. Easily, there is no shortage of this, uh, of this classic duck. They um, are extremely social. They are gregarious. Often, if you've seen them, you've seen them in a group. Um, if they're flying in a group, they're known as a flock. If they're swimming in a group, they're known as a sword, S-O-R-D. Uh, and um, they uh, are pretty good natured, although they um, can get pretty territorial and aggressive during, uh, during breeding especially. Um, when they fly, they can fly vertically and something like up to 70 miles per hour. So yes, Michelle, very, you know, top speed uh, uh, duck. Um, <clears throat> and uh, they'll even um, um, uh, uh, wag that tail of theirs. They'll wag it, or to mention, we're talking about the tail. They'll, males, females will wag that tail, supposedly to show some kind of happiness. So maybe you've, you've seen that before when they are kind of walking or waddling around, uh, they may do that. And when they walk, they walk, you know, we see them walking in a line. Uh, that's often sort of the, the, um, the, the lead will, uh, uh, will um, carry them, you know, will, will lead them and the ones in the back will kind of do the job of looking around. Um, and that's sort of a safety because they, they really are, uh, uh, especially when they have chicks, they are um, quite numerous in their, in their flock. Um, or in their sword. Uh, <clears throat> I wonder what they're called when they're just walking around. Um, <laughs> they have, this is interesting, apparently they have two uh, completely different brains, um, and each eye is in one of the brains, uh, so they can sleep uh, with one eye open, apparently. They can sleep, or one brain can sleep while the other doesn't sleep. Interesting. Um, they will blow bubbles uh, to expel dirt that's in their nostrils. So you may see that when they're in the water blowing bubbles. Um, not for fun, it's got, there's, a, there's a purpose there uh, to expel dirt. 
And um, <clears throat> let's see, they uh, can actually recognize different colors as well. Maybe you know, those complex two brains of theirs allow them to recognize color and of course other, other, um, other ducks. Uh, they preen um, like many birds. Um, they'll preen after swimming where they you know, rub their heads and, and they, it's behind their tail under their tail where they have that um, gland that they secrete an oil um, to spread it and help them to become waterproof. All right? Maybe that also gives them that shine. <laughs> um, and uh, um, they'll eat uh, kind of almost anything. Uh, they uh, are um, eating, you know, aquatic insects. Um, yeah. You know, plankton, uh, plant material, seeds, you'll see them kind of foraging around on land too, but anything out of the water. So they really are omnivorous, um, and, and, and which is why they get along so well in the urban environment. They really are extremely adaptable. Uh, snails, we get Donna says snails, yeah, frogs, I think even, um, pretty much anything. Wow, cool facts, learning so much. Two brains and sea colors. Thank you for this. Okay, great. Uh, you're very welcome. Thanks for tuning in, Michelle. Uh, yeah, so much to, to, to know about them. Now, when they're, um, they breed, every, like they said, they're found throughout the, the Americas, North America. They, they breed almost anywhere as long, you know, as, as the, the, the weather is, you know, they, they migrate to where, ideally, where uh, the climate's more temperate, but they'll be, um, <clears throat> they'll be almost anywhere, so they'll, they'll, they'll breed throughout, um, and um, it's the, the males that can get very aggressive during the mating season, so they get very territorial, and they might kill even another male. Um, the female uh, often has been known to, like, incite kind of some fighting so that she can see who the strong males are, who she's going to choose to mate with, and she will just mate with that, that male, okay? Um, the, so she's somewhat monogamous, um, fairly monogamous. She's monogamous. Uh, the males are not, however. Um, they aren't, and uh, so, um, but they, they start their courtship early, like October, November, with the door starting to, to blow shut here. Um, uh, the, uh, they'll start their courtship in, in, the, in the fall, October, November, and then uh, mating, uh, actual mating and, and nesting doesn't occur until the spring. So quite, quite some time there um, that they're together uh, before we actually see any eggs. And uh, when it's when she's ready to lay eggs, when she lays the eggs, they are um, anywhere from like eight to thirteen uh, whitish to greenish eggs. Uh, fairly, you know, kind of probably average egg size, um, maybe like a chicken egg. And she'll she she won't lay them all on the at the same time. Um, let's see, time to shut the door here. Break it. Just thought we'd get an effect. <laughs> um, so uh, she'll lay them on alternate days. Incubation is anywhere from like 23 to 30 days, and she, she's the one taking care of the eggs. She's the one that takes care of the chicks. Hence, she's the one that's camouflage. Okay, so her job is to lay those eggs and sit on those eggs. Um, and, until they hatch. And when they hatch, uh, the chicks are born precocial. They're ready to swim. Um, they are, let's see, very cute. <laughs> uh, kind of that yellowy brown. I don't know if you can see that here. Um, they've got that, that eye stripe, that black eye stripe across the eye. Um, dark head and uh, very, very cute, very fluffy. And as you may have seen, they will follow her um, and she will imprint on them starting right away. Uh, and uh, then she may, if, if conditions are right, um, she may have another brood in the same season. Uh, and the, however, the, the young, the chicks, will um, 
uh, let's see, they will, in about 60 days, they will fly, and it takes about 14 months for them to look fully like an adult, whether they're male or female. But right there, you see them, they really all look pretty much the same. Um, let's see, who are their predators? Uh, they have predators. They have, um, mm, you know, their natural predators like owls, um, hawks, coyotes. Um, then of course, you know, uh, dogs and cats may chase after them. They are in, if they are, you know, in urban environments, we often see them crossing the road. There's, there's a house, you know, in Coronado where they have a little pond in the front and I see them crossing the road and I, hopefully none of them have ever been hit, but it seems kind of likely because they, uh, they, uh, do so well in urban environments that they may, uh, you know, humans may be a threat to them as well unintentionally. And then I, I, uh, I, I'm in Tidelands Park a lot, um, up there in Coronado when I ride my bike to work. And there are some very uh, friendly, <laughs> friendly is a word, uh, mallards that approach me uh, when I'm getting ready at them in my car. Um, I think they've they've been obviously they've been fed this is what happens uh, people feed them and then they become very unafraid of humans so they'll approach me like right up to me like pretty much standing at my feet um, and I have to shoo them away it's it's um cute but not cute anyway it's, that's but they they do they 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 uh, they adapt sorry <laughs> them like they adapt to wildlife I mean, to humans very, very well. Um, this is a duck that is uh, pretty much where if the domestic ducks that you might see, those white ducks, um, all came from. So then when they hybrid, uh, hybridize, um, they kind of are a threat to uh, wild ducks, um, displacing them because they do so well. And um, they've all long time been hunted uh, for food and um, um, and so, yeah, go, oh, so I'm sorry, they've long been hunted for food, but st even still, there's not really a shortage of them. Let's see, gulls eat the chicks at Shelter Island. Yeah, so, um, you know, gulls are another predator um, and going for, going for the babies. And there's so many, hence the, you know, if, if they're having 18, up to, I mean, sorry, up to 13 chicks, they are, may not all survive. Um, and, and, and part of that is uh, the food chain and those chicks are food for, for other animals. So there we are, the classic, the mallard, male and female there, looking so happy, yet there, note that there's an aggressive <laughs> courtship or uh, uh, rituals that happen um, before they, they pair off uh, for, for the season. So any questions about the mallard? Kind of ran through that pretty fast. It, sorry, it is cold and, and windy. Even here inside the visitor center, it's pretty cold, but I wanted to share some of the outdoor with you. And um, I got a little startled there when the door blew shut. And I hope you all are, are dry and warm at home. And if you're joining us from, from outside of, of San Diego, I hope it's nice where you are, and you're very welcome, Michelle. Thank you so much. And if you're tuning in later and you have questions, uh, please type them in the chat. We'll come back and answer them. And uh, this is going to be it for this year for Lunchtime Live. We will take the next two Tuesdays off, I think it is, and then return the first Tuesday after the the year. Let's see, Jenny. Yes, and you can get those the mallard <coughs> emojis. <laughs> Those are cute, putting them in there, there in a line. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, happy holidays, and we will see you next year, even though that's not really very far from now. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. It's been a wonderful year with Lunchtime Live. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.